Oh hey, it's Wes. It's a beautiful day, it's really hot outside, and it's time to talk about... Tripods. And don't worry, this isn't going to be your usual, let's fiddle with all the buttons and switches tripod review. I'm gonna shake things up a little bit, and I'm gonna do some tests and measurements to actually try to put some empirical objective data into picking what is actually a great tripod and what is just a bunch of money with some sticks sticking out of it. Let's start out with some aluminum tripods. First of all, super popular tripod right here. This is the Manfrotto Be Free Advanced Aluminum. So this is the cheaper of the two. There's also a carbon fiber version that we'll be looking at soon. So the Manfrotto Aluminum weighs in at 3.6 pounds, 1.6 kilograms, has a capacity of 17.6 pounds, 7.98 kilograms. I'm not too concerned about a high capacity since I shoot with a mirrorless camera that generally doesn't weigh, even with a large lens, any more than like five pounds. This is $190. So what are we gonna compare this to? Well, on the low end, or rather the cost-effective end, we're looking at the Moman tripod. This is also aluminum, a little bit different as we have a five segment leg instead of a four. And the Manfrotto has the snap legs, while the Momon has the rotating locks. That's a little bit of a six of one, half a dozen of another, in that the snap locks have one, some advantages, rotating locks have another. Some people actually find it faster to open the rotating locks all at once. Some people find it faster to open and close the snap locks. I quite like the feel of the rotating locks. It feels more solid, even if it's just in my head. One key difference that I've found here is that the leg locks on the Momon actually aren't momentary. You pull them out, they stay in place, then you put them back in. In many ways, I prefer this to the typical spring-loaded lock, where you have to hold it in the whole time or it gets stuck. So the Momon weighs in at 3.44 pounds, within spitting distance of the Manfrotto, has a capacity of 33 pounds. That seems a little bit exaggerated to me. Doesn't seem that much sturdier in any way than the Manfrotto, but I mean, who's gonna test these to breaking? I'm gonna do lots of interesting tests, but I'm not gonna purposely break these. Well, unless they break during my load test, but we'll get to that. We're looking at only $80 for this thing. It also can come with a video pan head, but I tried that out, I didn't much like it. It adds a lot of instability to the rig and kind of shifts around no matter how tight you make it. So I'm just gonna keep this simple with the ball heads. Mounted on the top of the Momon is a typical Arca Swiss plate. Mounted on the top of the Manfrotto is a typical Manfrotto quick release plate. To be perfectly honest, super subjective opinion, I hate these. They pinch your fingers, they're hard to get in, get out, and I don't like the idea of having it quickly released. I would much rather have a knob that I crank into place than I pull back out when I'm done. The last thing I want is for what holds my camera to a tripod to be released quickly. It just doesn't seem like a safe or great idea to me, no matter how well executed it is. And this is on a pretty late stage of execution. They have advanced this very far. This, however, does come with a camera plate that is supposedly compatible with both Arca Swiss and the Manfrotto system. But if I take that plate and put it on this guy right here and clamp her down all the way, it actually doesn't clamp down. It doesn't even work on this tripod. Kind of disappointing. Maybe this one is to blame because it's not exactly Arca Swiss compliant. But anyway, I would much rather replace this plate with an Arca Swiss plate, which actually, watch that video right here, or there, and see how you can do that very easily. Now, we've got to test these tripods. We've got to see exactly what makes them good or bad. But how do we do that? I will fully admit, I saw DP Review TV's video halfway through making this video. I had already actually done my tests, and I have some slightly different tests going on to see how these work out. Let me show you something. I bought this cheap and supposedly calibrated force meter. I put a 70 to 200 lens on my camera, mounted it with the uh, lens collar to balance it out as well as possible, mounted it on each of the tripods that we're here to test today, and then I applied exactly 20 newtons of force to the end of the 70 to 200 lens to see exactly how much it deflected so that I can see which of these tripods resists bending the best. 
This is test number one. And then, to test the resistance to vibration, instead of using a toy of some kind, I took a soccer ball and dropped it between the legs of the tripod on the wood floor and caught it after the first bounce to see how long the tripod would continue to vibrate with that vibration coming up from the legs. I'm less concerned with the legs themselves being vibrated, but the vibration coming up the legs and into the tripod. Seems reasonable to me. The Momon Aluminum, with the center post extended not at all, moved 6.5 centimeters with the load and stopped vibrating after 1.1 seconds. Then with the halfway post, each post at halfway since there are two, 7.2 centimeters of deflection, 3.5 seconds of vibration. Very interesting. Then, and this will become a common trend, with the post fully extended, it bent nine centimeters. That's only nine centimeters visually at 200 millimeters. And the vibration test completely failed. It just never stopped vibrating. That's not something I expected. If you look very closely and zoom in very far, you pull that center post up all the way and you get a vibration into it, it just keeps going. Now, I mean, I didn't wait for 30 or 40 seconds for it to stop vibrating. That's just totally impractical, but I consider that a fail. You put that post up all the way, if you're not doing a wide angle, if you're doing a long exposure, you're gonna get camera shake. And I should mention, I turned off any image stabilization in the lens or in the camera. Moving right along to our friendly competitor, the Manfrotto, <laughs> more expensive, but is it better? 6.25 centimeters of deflection with the post not extended and 2.9 seconds of vibration. Post halfway out, we got 6.7 centimeters of deflection. Hardly any difference when the post was only halfway out. That was interesting. 3.9 seconds of vibration. Pretty similar. And then with the post all the way up, we got 7.8 centimeters of deflection. And once again, we failed our vibration test. You're using one of these tripods. You probably don't want to ever put the post up all the way. If you need it up that high, you're probably going to have to move on to a non-travel friendly tripod, something much larger. Functionally, these tripods came out to within a fairly small margin of error to each other in performance. This one was just a little bit weaker, but I was kind of surprised because the legs have more segments. I thought that it would uh, give out a little faster. Well, let's switch it up and move on to the carbon fiber tripods. See if that gives us anything different. All right, here we have the newer carbon fiber tripod and the Manfrotto Be Free Advanced Carbon Fiber. And I think our price points are actually gonna be even more different now. The Manfrotto Carbon comes in at $320, whereas our newer carbon is only 100 bucks. Less than a third of the price. Is there a big difference here? First of all, with our newer, we have a lot of metallic components, just like the Momon, and Unlike the Manfrotto, some of these random components aren't plastic. They both have the rotating leg locks, and they both have a single center column. Obviously, once again, one main difference is this came with an Arca Swiss. This came with the Manfrotto plate. However, I replaced that. Again, you can follow the link in the description or the link that I showed above. Manfrotto, once again, which I didn't talk about before, has a more complicated ball head assembly. Here you have the main ball clutch, but then there is a secondary safety lock. I don't exactly get the point of that because I don't generally push this by accident. I feel like if I've tightened this down enough, it shouldn't pop out that easily. And so you, you can pull this in and lock it down to be safer. I generally don't use that. And the knobs on here, I didn't want to talk about it too much with the aluminum version because that was a cheaper tripod. But again, the knobs are all plastic on this. The switches, all plastic. That's kind of a little disappointing when you're spending over $300 on a tripod. Now, I mean, I'm not expecting carbon fiber knobs, but you have this newer tripod and, well, these knobs, they're all metal. They feel great. Although the lag locks on these are both metal, the feel of the lag locks on the Manfrotto are much more substantial. They feel like they're ready for business. Leg locks on the newer, there's a lot of plastic in there. They don't feel fantastic, but they work. I have been using all of these tripods. Mostly though, I've been using the cheaper ones because honestly, I don't expect the Manfrotto's to just suddenly fail on me. It's the cheaper ones, the Momon and the newer. Those are the ones that kind of pose the questions. I use them a lot and they're still working just fine. 
I expected something to break or fall off of one of them by now because they cost so much less, but they haven't. Let's get to the test results. I expected, honestly, the newer to be more solid than the Manfrotto. I mean, look at the size of these legs. They are way thicker than the ones on the Manfrotto. Manfrotto weighs less and these legs right to the tip are so slender. I was kind of doubtful that that was going to hold things up very well. We'll start with Ochipo right here. At a weight of 3.38 pounds, this actually weighs quite a bit more than the Manfrotto does. Column down, 5.5 centimeters of deflection, two seconds of shake. Post halfway, 6.75 centimeters, 2.6 seconds of shake. It's actually pretty good. Halfway is almost exactly the same strength and vibration resistance as all the way down. Put the post all the way up though, eight centimeter deflection, 8.2 seconds of shake. Okay, so it's not perfect. It kept shaking for a while, but unlike the aluminum tripods, it stopped. And I didn't necessarily expect that. I mean, I'm not a material scientist, I'm an engineering technologist, so I didn't really know what to expect from this, but apparently the carbon fiber ones are much more resistant to vibration than the aluminum ones. Or are they? Let's move on to the Manfrotto. With the column all the way down, we have 5.7 centimeters of deflection and 1.1 seconds of shake. That's a pretty solid result for shake. With the post halfway, six centimeters of deflection, 1.9 seconds of shake. Again, just like this guy, the post halfway, their performance is pretty solid still. With the post all the way up, we have 6.25 centimeters of deflection. Wow. And five seconds of shake. So when we pull this all together, but with the column all the way up, it actually well outperforms this guy with its column up. But, well, you kind of need to put the column halfway up just to match the height of the newer. But generally speaking, the column halfway up on this, it's solid. You get a lighter tripod with very similar performance to this beefy guy. Now I say beefy, they're all travel sized, they're all reasonably light. For a little bit of weight savings, is it really worth spending over three times as much money on the Manfrotto? What else do you get? Do you get anything else? Well, I'll tell you what you don't get. You don't get a bag hook on the bottom of this center column. What the heck is with that Manfrotto? Instead, you get this little weird hook on the side that's not quite centered. And you get this little multi-mount on the side, which not a lot of people are going to be using. I don't understand what would have been so hard about putting the bag hook on the bottom because that can stabilize a lot of vibration, cover up for a lot of problems. And it's the same deal with the aluminum ones. You got a bag hook on the Momon, and you got the side hook on the Manfrotto. What you do get is a 10 year warranty if you register your tripod with Manfrotto. That is a lot more warranty than this guy, which honestly, good luck getting a warranty out of newer. You'd have to go off to your Amazon or wherever you bought it seller and try to get a replacement product, which sometimes those sellers evaporate pretty quickly. Sorry, I have bugs on my legs. They're kind of a one-off deal, much like buying Godox products from just Amazon on eBay. You can save a bit of money if you don't buy it from the authorized reseller, like say Strobe Pro or Adorama, but you're not gonna get any aftermarket support. So is that worth three times the price though? Why don't we compare our two Manfrotto tripods? So if you're looking for something that's backed by a company, something that has a good warranty, these aren't the most expensive tripods, but they're kind of the middle of the pack with a good reputation. You're a little bit plasticky, but if something breaks, Manfrotto is going to stand behind this product. But which one of these do you choose? You spend twice as much money, almost twice as much money, to get the carbon fiber? As the old saying goes, the best camera is the one that you have with you. The best tripod is also the one that you have with you. And if I pick these up, the difference in weight actually feels reasonably significant. Sitting at 2.6 pounds for the carbon and 3.6 for the aluminum. Yep, there's a difference. If your tripod sitting in your bag is going to keep you from going out, keep you from getting those long exposures, keep you from getting those interesting pictures that you need the tripod for, then yeah, you're probably gonna wanna spend a little extra money and get the lighter one. But if you just need a tripod to put a camera on, if you're not lugging it around all over the place, or if you are, it's not that far, or heck, you got a strong back and a big backpack. Honestly, there's not a huge reason to pay way more for a tripod these days. The cheap ones, 
They're surprisingly good for the money. I'm not here to tell you what to do, what to buy. I'm just giving you all the information. You can do with that whatever you want. There's links to all these products down in the description. You can buy something, not buy something. It's up to you. Were any of these products provided to me for free? Up, 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 up. The Momon aluminum tripod was. The rest of them, I paid for with my own money. Which of these am I gonna keep? I'm hesitant to tell you because it's a very personal decision. Everyone has different situations. I have a lot of videos to make. I have a lot of cameras to mount on tripods. Honestly, I'm going to return this guy and I'm going to keep my two carbon fiber tripods because look where we are. We're out in the middle of nowhere. And I lugged all these tripods out here. It actually was a pretty long walk from the car. And I would never take a tripod with me. Maybe I'm lazy if it was super heavy, super big. This one folds smaller than the newer carbon. It weighs less than the Manfrotto aluminum. That's the winner for me. This is going to be my road tripod. The newer carbon is gonna continue doing a lot of work for me in the studio, in the YouTube studio. Don't let me sway your decision. It's all up to you. Photography, it's a very personal thing. So, until next time, go take some very stable photos. Oh, and just one more thing. I really like this grip on the leg of the Manfrotto aluminum. I mean, they probably didn't put a grip on the leg of the carbon fiber one just to save weight, but it feels great. I know, it's weird, it's just a little thing, but I love it when things feel good. Oh, one more thing. These may look like blueberries, but don't eat them.